Hello everyone and welcome back to Vulnerability Weekly. In this show, we analyze week on week the latest fact, the latest news that we see over the web, the vulnerability that gets disclosed, and the latest breach whenever this is relevant and this is significant. This week, probably the biggest news and the biggest breach um, are twofold. One for a very well known reason it is the Uber breach. Um, and the very well known reason is that it was particularly pervasive in terms of attack, in terms of widespreadness. And it was a, a huge debate in the community. And from the negative side, maybe ambulance, ambulance chasing has been particularly bad in this particular breach. And ambulance chasing is a very disgruntled, frowned upon tactic of <clears throat> a specific security vendor that mentioned that their security product will be solving their particular solution or their particular thing. And even if that's the fact, even if it's remotely true, and none of the time is because we well know, we're well aware that when there is a, an incident, it's usually a chain of fact between human technology process failure, and it's never just a technology. Technology is just an aid of a process. But it's particularly disgruntled um, and frowned upon attitude of a certain vendor that says, you know, my product could have solved this, my product could have prevented this. And in a particular time where security, people are trying to fix and trying to get, so it's a very stressful time. So please don't do it. Uh, if you're on the vendor side, uh, we don't do it. We, we, we refrain from it and we will do an episode separately just on the bridge in itself, understanding and analyzing the fact and where we are with those facts. And that's it. We still await the official report. Other than that, there was another funny hack, uh, and I would say funny in a particular way, you not know, if you're a rock star. Uh, there have been, there have been um, a disclose of the source code of GTA 5, a very well known game in the community. There's been um, basically a cash cow for GTA and Rockstar Games, that is the software house behind GTA games. And of recent, GTA has announced um, GTA 6, that is a very well-weighted product uh, that will replace almost a 10 years old game that has been out there. And an attacker managed to not only steal the source code and part of the seal source code of GTA 5, but also some of the screenshot of GTA 6 that were then followed posted on YouTube and of course, because of the hype, because of the attention, this heist and heist is as a joke, is one of the missions that you have in GTA Online as well or in GTA 5. Um, I disclose full disclosure, I'm a gamer, so I like some of these games. But joke, joke aside, is uh is a stream of issue that we've seen also in the past. Um and We've seen gaming studio being attacked um, and ransomware in the worst case scenario, and their source code disclosed the partially or fully to attacker or to dark web if you fundamentally didn't want to pay the ransom. And um, we saw this with Cyberpunk of recent, and there was the software house, Polish software house. Uh, that was was attacked in that particular time. Other than that, let's dive deeper into this episode of Security Weekly of the week of the 12th, the 20th. Um, I have to say I keep it short because also this week there's been some particularly as British, particularly reluctant news where the Queen uh, has parted and, and, and departed and left us and as a British national. I am particularly touched by that episode and I refrain for actually posting and being very active online on that particular morning day in, in order to respect. Um, so this episode comes out 
a little bit later than what they usually do does on a Monday. Um, so during this vulnerability weekly this week, um, from a vulnerability perspective, there have been an exploit of a particularly version of Linux and a group that has been using sidewalks, a vector uh, that was used by the specific APT group in the past. And the specific group has been very, very active, um, especially targeting is a Chinese group that is particularly targeting Southern Asia and university connected, um, university connected groups and activists. Um, and I've included some of the detail about the C2 network and the backdoor and how that fundamentally connecting there and uh, fundamentally pull additional malware or uh, remote access tool, RAT, um, and uh, the link to the assets for the full analysis of this particular vulnerability. Um, there's been an attack on or a vulnerability being largely exploited now patched by Mitel and Mitel is a provider of VoIP solution of voice over IP or kit that fundamentally enable you to do calls over the phone over a voice over IP phone. And um, there's been a new vulnerability is closed CV29499 that has been now patched. Now on the malware side and maybe on the social engineering side, there have been uh, and I learned from a number of researchers, um, especially Oleg Popov, that there was a study specifically looking at YouTube link or YouTube video that promoted cheatings on games and fundamentally lured um, gamers into clicking or uh, opening what they thought it was a cheat or a cheating program and ended up being ransomware or crypto or crypto ransom at a fundamentally locked crypto, um, locked with cryptography or, or encrypted fundamentally the, the victim drive. And uh, we've seen a flare of crypto locks or uh, ransomware of late uh, together with traditional attack to actually steal data on Microsoft, Okta and now Uber. So there's been a particularly heavy activity on a cybersecurity side from both the social engineering perspective, the user perspective, and the vulnerability exploitation at scale perspective. In order, talking about vulnerability exploitation and fixing, uh, Microsoft had released in the past Tuesday a number of fixes, especially of a couple of zero days that have been around and 64 uh, security flow in total. I've listed the number of them, but specifically the one uh, 37969 um, with a particular score um, of 7.8, but also not super, superly exploited in an EPSS score of 0 0.011. Um, nonetheless, because of the popularity of the hack and because of the damage that it could cause to the operating system and to the log file and to the operating system that attack, it was particularly um, well regarded and well paid for an exploit at this stage uh, that then of course dropped value in uh, uh, after the uh, release of the patch because effectively it's not a, a zero day anymore. There is a patch available, but it's still quite active. Together with others, there have been um, remote code execution, they've been uh, added, critical, very critical. Again, take the CVSS score with a pinch of salt, depending on where your system is, depending on which contact it is, and the criticality of the system that uh, is deployed into, there are different CV. But those have been particularly bad because they're all remote code execution and enable an attacker to fundamentally with a string or an injection of code to execute code, potentially download additional malware. And um, that's why the CBSS score is particularly high for those. Now we touch on Ghana and um, they've been, uh, sorry, we touch on um, Grand Theft Auto and the fact that it was disclosed, um, the GTA 6 videos were disclosed on uh, the dark web as a proof that that hack has been um, 
has been successful. And we, we have included a few, few snapshots and screenshots. These actually have come a little bit wider because of the noise generated by the Uber hack. And of course, I'm not gonna disclose in here the full vulnerability timeline. We're gonna do an episode just dedicated on the timeline of the attack and Uber hack with a, a snapshot of where it is. Uh, but fundamentally, it was a very, very well sophisticated attack that exploited um, a usability factor or or an, or a fatigue factor of IT workers um, across the board. So I'm gonna do an episode that is completely dedicated on that because I wanted to keep this short and this vulnerability and this actual attack require a little bit careful time and analysis for the nature of it. I hope this was useful. I hope you enjoy uh, the Vulnerability Weekly. As always, like, uh, follow, and subscribe to our channel to receive the latest updates. This is Francesco Cipollone. I'm the CEO and founder of Outside Phoenix. I hope this was useful. As always, if you want to know more, visit us at www.upsidephoenix.com or the link in the attachment for the latest information. Stay safe out there, be paranoid, and be informed, and subscribe. Goodbye.